I just talked with Francois de Toy and Lydia. At the end, she popped in. I didn't know she was sitting right off camera. I would have had her join. Oh my goodness, I just love these guys. Um, I can't tell you, first of all, how grateful I am as a clerk. Uh, the impact uh, of the Mirror Bible, uh, the language uh, that has been given to us, the invitation to discover our union uh, in its pages, uh, just the commentary. Uh, you know, I, if you're unfamiliar with Francois, this is actually an old one. I'm showing it to you because it's all marked up. This one I, I can't let go. I have the newer ones and, and I open them up, but I, I can't tell you. Uh, it's a little heavy when you travel. You have to do the phone, take the app. But I can't tell you how grateful I am for Francois, the Mere Bible, and, and how grateful we are as a family. It's just, uh, I spend a whole lot of time in the mirror and, and uh, couldn't recommend it enough. This conversation is um, fire as I expected it would be. Francois was a, a, a guest in the first season and uh, I've only become more um, thankful for him since. Here we are halfway through our fifth season and uh, this is the first time we've been able to reconnect in this way and have him back on the podcast. He's a busy man. He's focused and, and, and working through Acts right now. Uh, a month ago, I had uh, a peek into Acts 17. He sent it to me and I'm sure a handful of other folks. And, and uh, I didn't realize how uh, current uh, it was. Uh, he's actually working through Acts 18 now. But we, we talk a little bit about uh, what he's doing with the mirror, mostly at the end. But... I learned from our first conversation that the moment we pick up, hit record, because we're going to start right away. <laughs> and so you're going to catch most of our greeting to one another. Uh, and then uh, he begins to just share what's burning on his heart. <clears throat> Often when I do these conversations, uh, I, I, I hope to get to that place where I can ask folks what's burning on their hearts. You know, it sometimes requires a little bit of trust and back and forth, getting to know each other. But you never have to do that with Francois. We go straight to the burning. And the burning is union. It's living from. It's the measureless nature of the love of God. The reality that we've been invited into that measureless reality. We finally move into the living from instead of toward. Um, everything, of course, in the context of union is the discovery that we are already in Christ, that Christ is within us. At the end of the conversation, uh, Lydia uh, joins us and talks about our innocence, you know, our original design. That's my language. But uh, the fact that we have been created uh, and innocent and invited to live in that paradigm or that realm, you know, just a, a, a lovely conversation that was obviously a fire hose in the sense that Francois uh, is um, living from uh, and every conversation I've ever had with him um, is similar to, to this uh, that we had together. This one I happen to record. I think it's going to bless. I know it will. And again, can't say how thankful we are and how thankful I am uh, for their friendship and kindness and, and love and what they've been leaning into for a lifetime. You can find all things uh, podcast related at a familystory.org. And it's also where you can give. We're listener supported and really grateful uh, when you partner with us in that way. Uh, it's been such a life giving uh, adventure, these podcasts. Uh, uh, really um, just been transformative for me. And so grateful to be able to do this with the community that's come around it and the relationships uh, that have happened because of this podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you partner with us that way or in prayer or just a part of the community. And one of the ways you can be a part of the community uh, is uh, on our Facebook group. There's folks gathering there uh, constantly leaning into the goodness of God, uh, reminding each other of uh, his kindness, his gentleness, his love, self-control. 
all the fruits of his indwelling spirit. You can also check out uh, our Instagram page. We are posting regularly there. I'd encourage you to sign up for our mailing list as well. That That's at afamilystory.org. I'll keep you up to speed on Zoom calls and community gatherings and conferences. We've, we've had one that was incredible. Uh, some announcements coming up around new books. Excited about uh, just all things uh, connected to the ministry of Family Story. So afamilystory.org, that's where you find us. And if you're looking for The Mirror or, or to learn more about Francois, you go to mirrorword.net, mirrorword.net. I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation that I had with Francois and Lydia de Toy. Well, I want to tell you how thankful I am to you, man, how grateful my family is to you. Um, your love, your, your, your authenticity, uh, you're fully present whenever we meet and interact. And then, uh, and then what you're writing, what you continue to be faithful with. Uh, I can't tell you how much you've impacted just our own lives. And so I just wanted to start there. Thank you, my friend. Thank Grateful you, my brother. You. We, we are yeah. very, very um, constantly just overwhelmed with, with how the word continues to impact people's lives, you know, and, and one, one sometimes yeah. feels yeah. Um, one, one, one sits in such a remote spot on planet Earth. But um, when we when we arrived here, we were actually called the place Patmos, you know, because I used to say to Lydia at the time when we were living in Hermanus, we lived there for almost 20 years, and and uh, we have a lot of family there. The old museum was is the De Witt's house, which is my great-grandfather who actually brought Hermanus, yeah. after whom the town was named, from Holland because he didn't want his children to learn English. So, so we lived there <laughs> with lots of family, lots of friends, and even in South Africa, if people know you from Hermanus, they feel envious, you know, and, and sure enough, we had constant visitors, <laughs> and it was wonderful. But we knew that in order for us to, to complete... Um, what what God just laid upon our hearts. In, in I initially thought it yeah. would just be a, a few select chapters, you know, in the, in the New Testament, but yeah. it became just an ongoing <laughs> uh, a project. And and we knew that we couldn't do it from Hermanus with all our traveling, and, and so we stopped in 2015. That was when we found this place, and, and this place found us, and, and God just brought us here. And and it was us. Yeah. You know, John had to go to Patmos and Paul to prison. So let's 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 rather prefer Patmos at this stage of our lives. <laughs> so we're very grateful for this this this, this, this place, but but to see, to see and to witness. How uh, uh, the voice just continues to flow, you know, the the, the wonderful uh, reality uh, of a conversation that we are just so privileged as a human race to belong to this Come conversation. On. You don't feel out of place. You don't feel, oh, I'm not part of this audience, but we are in the immediate audience in, in the address of God. Um, Hebrews 1, where he says, in many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers. He's speaking to the Hebrews, to the Jewish people. He says, but in this eschatos, the fullness of time, he has spoken to us in a son. And he exhibits the majesty of God, <laughs> suddenly the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations in, in old scriptures, you know, in old ancient thoughts and, and traditions and cultures, burst through their boundaries in flesh. In skin suit Come language, <laughs> and here we are, you know, here we are with a voice, a voice incarnate. The destiny of the word has never been just to be trapped in a book with so many pages and so many add-ons and thoughts. And it's it's always been the most accurate translation of God's conversation is the incarnation. It's God in your face, in the beauty of your uniqueness. And it's it's not mm. this clone thing, you know. We're not clones of Jesus. We just this unique individual part of a humanity family that are equally embraced in the same thought, in the same origin, in the same genesis. We share the sameness, which brings our message uh, a platform that uh, I was sharing with a folk because the one person from from America, um, our young people in the in the eighties actually had a lot of contact with him. Many of our acts team connected with him and stayed with him and uh, him and his wife, uh, Chris, Christopher Carinzi and Margie, then okay. Johnson City. Okay. And it was just okay. amazing uh -huh. uh, how, how God just reconnected our lives. And while we were, uh, um, they came to visit, they're doing a conference in Otsuren in our local town at the moment. 
and it's just amazing to realize that that this conversation knows no limit, you know, and no no time. It goes beyond time zone, beyond beyond geographic, uh, and cultural, and political, and economic, whatever it is that we've measured, every space yeah. that we occupy, but to find ourselves. Um, in the immediate focus of a, of, of, of a deity of Father, Son, and Spirit with, with, <laughs> with the mind of God, with the mind of Christ occupied with the individual. What is man that thou art so mind full of him? Isn't that an amazing <laughs> thought that David bursts out, you know, on a thousand years before Christ? He says, what is man? And, 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 and it's been the quest of the human race to discover a, a place of likeness, a place of, really belonging at homeness where I'm not yeah. squeezing in you know, and feel like a foreigner, feeling a little bit out of, out of place, you know, out of tune. And there's a synchrony, <laughs> there's a beauty in the gospel that, that cannot be underestimated. And it's announced page after page after page. You know, as we just realize that this conversation includes me and it includes my neighborhood, <laughs> includes places where I could never go and be physically. <laughs> so we, we shared with, with, with our friends this, 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 this week at our, how the boundaries of, of, of the gospel just extend so far beyond what we could imagine. When Paul write, writes to the Philippians, uh, they, they mentioned the, the little Ruach translation. I don't know whether I have a little copy of it, but it was years ago, 40 years ago, which uh, w- when we had the axiom in the 80s. And um, at that time, I, I was just so prompted, you know, to do with, with uh, to engage with some of Paul's epistles. And, and I actually... Yeah. The last verse that I translated, it was never published, but it, it was in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, where Paul writes this and he says, um, uh, not only in, in my presence, but much more in my absence. <laughs> and then say, it, it says, right. engage the full reality of the salvation. You know, it's, it's Paul sees a space of, of, of connection with, with, with the future yeah. generations. Beyond the, the, the reduced space of his life, I mean, being imprisoned you know, in Paul's days, it was it was a very reduced space, very reduced, small little platform. He had no guarantee yeah. other than the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this message will carry beyond the, the prison cell walls you know, and take the yeah. world and flood the earth as God spoke, <laughs> like the waters cover the sea, every nook and cranny, the weight upon the ocean floor. You know, <laughs> it doesn't leave any nook and cranny untouched. By, by the effect of the water, you know, and, and he says, just as the water discovered the sea, so the knowledge of my glory will flood the earth. I see in my spirit the tsunami wave breaking upon the continents of this world, the islands of this world, the tsunami wave of glory, where there's no resistance from any institution or any, any force of whatever order has any further hold and significance other than the glory of God finding face. In ordinary people, <laughs> no titles, <laughs> no great, you know, just just ordinary people. God was he, 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 he so inhabits <laughs> the incarnate one. Can you imagine being part of the audience of Jesus? You know, two thousand years ago. He, he, the two of us just sneak in there and we get to witness yeah. the miracles and witness the uh, yeah, with our own ears. It's, and Jesus says in John 14, he makes this, this astonishing statement on his threshold of the cross. He says, it is to your advantage that I go. <laughs> it is to your advantage because I'm not, I'm not going to rob you of my presence. I want to surprise you with my presence within you. <laughs> and, and here we go. You know, we, we, we are not, we are not, um, uh, second-hand citizens, you know, we, we, we've got to just kind of tap into what P- Peter writes so beautifully when he begins to write himself, he's fisherman, illiterate, and he says, I will make sure that after my departure, you will be able at any time to recall these wow. things because we did not follow cleverly devised myths. We were eyewitnesses of his <laughs> majesty. We heard his voice <laughs> witnessing Elijah and Moses and whatever God spoke in ancient days finding flesh in an individual and this individual beams the glory of God so that with unveiled faces we may engage and behold and gaze and recognize the features of his being ignited within us 
Come on. So what a day we're living, my precious friend. What a precious day. What a, a priceless day. <laughs> we're alive to, to communicate a word that is unstoppable, absolutely unstoppable, a glory that is the desire of the nations. Christ is the desire of the, of the ends of the earth. And, and David says, and the ends of the earth shall remember <laughs> and return to the Lord. <laughs> it's impossible to remember <laughs> something that you've never known. <laughs> But the words are already embedded <laughs> in every nook and cranny of people's beings. We had a conversation this week where we just emphasized the fact that Paul's gospel introduces us, like in chapter 17 of Acts, to a place where he's not far from each one of us. And when we as a church begin to see that there is nothing that excludes the next person from the same glory, his same nearness, his same presence. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it uh, makes our uh, evangelism so powerful and so glorious and so <laughs> so so spontaneous. You know, we don't have to try uh, and win an argument and a debate on doctrines and how do you, what do you think about this or that? You know, just engage with the glory because the glory come carries on. a language within us that is so attractive. It's so attractive. Uh, it's beyond anything that we could do to dress up, you know, and just you know, <laughs> it's just the beingness. It's not far from each one of us because he says in the four yeah. quotes, he's their own poets. He says, they said in him we live and move, move. and have our being. Our being. The in himness yeah. of humanity has been largely underestimated, underemphasized. We've, we've, we've taught a gospel that, that's us and them. And there's no us and them in God <laughs> because there's no distance. <laughs> there's no separation. Come on. This union, this Come oneness. On. <laughs> oneness. Come and, on. Oh my goodness, this oneness embraces. And it's the embrace of eternity. It's not the embrace of a little time frame, of a little space, you know, who shall go beyond the ocean, you know, to, to get the word. The word is near unto you. It is in your mouth and it's in your heart. Come the on. word finds Come voice on. in your presence, in your being, in your gaze, <laughs> in your pondering. Ah, Lord, you are so oh, wonderful. So you are so amazing. So good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is the gospel you're preaching here, my friend. This no separation, yeah. no distance. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like we're in a good space. News. It's the good news. And I feel like we're in a space where there is such a yes uh, in the ether, uh, such a, um, a openness that maybe even... Ten years ago, uh, I, I didn't feel. Um, I, I was listening to you this morning on a message you preached. I called Beacons of Light. You sent it to me a month or so back. <laughs> okay. And you, you talked about how for so long we've preached man and Adam. We need to preach man in Christ. You said you cannot preach yeah. man in Christ before you see him there. To see him there, you have to have your understanding unveiled. Only faith can do that. Only faith can see what the flesh cannot see. And, yeah. and then you, you went on to talk about because faith is to your spirit what your senses are to your body. I feel like we're in an exactly. unveiled season. Are yeah. you are you seeing that? It's the, escalating. I, it's, it's escalating. <laughs> yes. You you use the phrase um, religion thrives on what two lies: distance and delay. But God has canceled that. He's canceled every yeah. definition of separate. This is what you this is what you're discussing exactly. right now. Maybe share with us how you got there. What do you do in the morning, bro, to, to live in this place? Because it's a measureless <laughs> revelation. You know, I talk about often, I, I tell the story of playing the love game with my daughter where I tell her I love her to the trees and back, and she says, I love you to the trees, the sun, the moon, the stars. And then I measure my love for her, and then she measures her love for me. And years and years ago, I played this game when she was five, and, and, and when I'd given her a litany of my love, this measureless revelation of how much I loved her, she said, Daddy, time two and blew my understanding of <laughs> paradigm up with times two <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and i feel like it's always it's, yeah go ahead go ahead 
<laughs> no, 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 I, I love that. You know, <laughs> it's uh, when Paul writes, you can you often sense that how he, yeah. he looks for words that can expand what he's saying, what he's just said. You know, it's like Come one on. word leads to another and another, and, and words become too small a container to, to fully exhibit. This is exceedingly abundantly above all yeah. that we can imagine, <laughs> and we can yeah. imagine our imagination getting free range, you know, to just yeah. go. <laughs> God yes. says, beyond that. If, yeah. Including that all of your being Come is on. wrapped up in this gospel. We do not sit with an inferior, timid gospel that we need to feel embarrassed about. But Paul says it so boldly in Romans 1, 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. It is the power <laughs> of God unto rescuing you from ever, ever it could possibly be that keeps you contained in, in a little uh, uh, fragile vessel of flesh. And, and your, your hope just is just trapped in, in the space that you occupy in the situation right now that you're facing. People we're what witnessing and listening to us right now. People are in terrible places. The world is in a mess. If you look at yeah. it without the faith, our understanding of this gospel and its influence and its and its mission, its destiny, to find voice in the, the next person mm. as, as a fire ignites and it leaps from one place to another. And there's no stopping this flame of God igniting hearts and bringing people to a place of hope and not just a little hopeless, but a, a, a loudness of hope that, in, that engages just wants being and you begin to walk the streets of, of wherever you are on this planet and you realize that I, re I represent, I carry Christ. I carry not just some theological idea about Christ within, but I carry in my flesh, in my eyes. I see people, Paul's metanoia moment, this de defining moment happened when he says, from now on, therefore, I no longer see anyone according to the flesh. <laughs> and it's just the most amazing moment. And, and, and and he sees that in the context that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And until we see it in our understanding of the, of the revelation of the gospel, we speak in we, we speak the gospel. Because in that same verse where Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. So we've made that last little bit of it for everyone but to believe, but who believes. A, a big exclusive uh, uh, phrase, you know. Yeah. Okay, it's all true, but you know, it's only uh, true to the measure that you believe it. But he, then in the, he, he carries on, he didn't write in verses, he's, he's still in the same conversation, verse 17 of Romans 1, he says, um, for in it, in this what, in this gospel that I'm not ashamed of, the righteousness <laughs> of God is revealed. It's not hidden in some code that you've got to try and find a key to. It's revealed from oh. faith. To faith. It's not a little step of faith until another little step builds upon that one and eventually we climb this ladder and, and uh, by the way, while we're busy with the ladder Jacob saw an open heaven because heaven's never been closed. Heaven's an open place. It's closer to us than our breath. It's closer to us than the glasses we have on, you know. It, it is, it is, it is, it, it's in him we live and move and have our being. We cannot escape him. Death cannot hide God from us. Space, time cannot hide God from us. So it's in this beautiful space where he says that it's from faith to faith. And the Greek word ek, the preposition, is out of, the source. It always points to the origin, the source. It is from the faith of God. Because faith doesn't begin with us. It doesn't begin with us winding up some kind of positive thinking mode, you know, trying to get everyone. Now say after me, and here's the sinner's prayer. And believe, do you mean it this time? Okay, there we go. Get the stamp. You, you're on. You're in. That one's still out. No, no. When we realize how in humanity is... <laughs> Our gospel <laughs> reveals the faith of God. God believes in you. <laughs> and when we realize that we're not dealing with our fragile efforts, you know, to, to faith. And one day we feel very positive. We feel we can face life, you know, yep. with a new uh, sternness in our hearts. And then suddenly the next day, you know, it's just you've got to start all over again and you've got to crawl out of this hole. But what a wonder to wake up with an understanding, to wake up with an understanding that we are in him who is true. In him, I so love 1 John 5, 20. I should read from a mirror, but I, I have my mirror there. I, I, I'm going to take to myself on the screen. But <laughs> it's okay. We'll get it. 
I had I had two of my my new prints, one in in South Africa, but I've just given them away yesterday. So what, what, one John five twenty, I'll quit it from the Revised Standard Version. That's when I when I first saw this many many years ago. That that John says uh, he, he writes one, one John five twenty. He says um, we know that the Son of God has come. So so we, we we've got we've got this this platform to live to to, to to operate from. We know that the Son of God has come, and He has given us understanding. Yeah. To know him who is true, so so yeah. the coming of 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 the of the, of, of son because in this remember Hebrews chapter one in these last days he's spoken to us in a son, and he is the effulgence of his glory, he exhibits his glory, and and having made purification for sins, he sat down, and we'll get to that in a moment about how God's throne celebrates our redeemed innocence, and we we do that hang this out like a little character you know, that one day when you hop through all the hoops you know, and you get a mature do a maturity in your Christian faith just before you die you're gonna you're gonna find Okay, now I'm really there. No, no, no. It's just, this is all part of the part and parcel of the same understanding, and it's in this understanding, obviously, our explode the, the uh, understanding and the uh, and the consciousness of this reality explodes into dimensions that that, that time has is no further relevance. But the beauty is that this 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 truth has a destiny uh, embedded in us. He's, he's, he has given us understanding to know. In the Greek, it says he's given us a mind to know him who is true and then the mind unfolds and we are in him who is true <laughs> <laughs> the truth of our inhumness is not an issue it's it's not on the table to debate on it's we are in him who is true because the understanding reveals an inness a oneness a union that began in god so if our faith's origin begins in god if it's god's faith that we're dealing with to begin with then i am by design compatible to engage as we were now this afternoon it was so inter- i downloaded your 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 app just just five minutes before we got talking and, and i realized that the enormity of what our technology brings to the table today you know ways yeah. that we couldn't our forefathers could never have imagined and here we are just touching the surface of spirit dimension and open heaven where we've engaged in in a oneness in a in a seeing and in a togetherness you know in i was speaking about the beauty of the view that i have just outside our window and how it just fills one's mind and visitors would come and just wow and then there's a greater wow that awaits us when we realize whether we can travel or join the conversation there geographically or whether we never have that opportunity to ever meet face and skin to skin. But here we are in a conversation that's invisible to the senses, but so visible to the inner man. No wonder Jesus says, when you begin to recognize me in Scripture, you'll begin to recognize me in you, and rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. Because we carry an innermost being within us that is the force of life. It is the force that will flood the earth as the war discovered the sea and we are we are in that moment you know this moment is just unstoppable because it's happening all over I mean just this last week we our, our one day a month that we go to Otsur and to our uh, city we, we we had such a, a wonderful time with with one of the reverends of the Dutch Reformed Church and, and someone gave him a mirror Bible a few years ago and it's just the first time that we actually met it and we were just there and it, and, it, and, and, and it was just so wonderful to, to realize that I, I, maybe I never in my life I've I, I, yeah, I grew up in a Dutch form church, but to, uh, and, and I studied for for my three years under that. But but to 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 witness this man and to witness his eyes and his face and and, and the glory that's just that's just taken a hold of him. And I realize how unstoppable this word is. It's unstoppable. It's going places where we could never be ourselves. Okay. No, no wonder Paul says, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. So the success of Paul's ministry was not measured in how many people he could still add and another journey. Maybe we can get another journey in ball just before you go. Just another journey, another place to go. I still wanted to go to Spain, he said. And then he says, much more in my absence. Jesus says, it's to your advantage that I go. <laughs> and when we discover this word, it's a well that awakens. He didn't promise a lady at the well that he's going to be back next week, you know, and he's going to, he's going to endorse on him and, and, and give her all kinds of certificates to, to hang on her wall. He says, out of, out of your innermost being. You'll never thirst again. This, this, this well, you've been a connection with Jacob and whatever it was and gave you goosebumps. He, this, this is a well within you. And this well has only one, one destiny. It's to flood the earth with the knowledge of his glory face to face. Because Isaiah 40, where he speaks about this highway, and I've got a lovely passage on it in Acts 17. And, and, and the, 
the first night I do on the Roman roads, it's, 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 yes. it's amazing to see how people can connect over centuries, how one can connect one connection with another. And, and we'll, we'll, our younger son was in Switzerland for 17 years and how the Swiss, a hundred years back, you know, they would, they would drill holes through the mountains and do, and how people want to find a connection somewhere. Every, every high place should be brought low. Every valley should be filled up. Every crooked place made straight. The rough place is made smooth. How God, the connector of, con- in, in Christ, in the income, God cannot get closer to the human race than what he did and what he does right now by his Holy Spirit. The yeah, Holy Spirit brings God into your office, into your study, into your studio, into your room, into your kitchen, wherever you are on this planet, into your space. And suddenly you realize it's not out there. It's right here. It's right here. It's within me. God lodges within me. Didn't find a house that I could build that's large enough and the most de- decorated, better decorated than the neighbor's effort. <laughs> but it's decorated in Christ in you. It's decorated <laughs> in your countenance, in your smile, in, in your voice, in your presence. Yeah. And, and it's just such an amazing thing to feel encouraged in this conversation because it's meant to. We are designed by God to be competent to this, in, in, in this, this, this reality. There's such a competence to, to believe. Because belief is not something to say after me prayer. It's something that happens to you. Faith is not something we do. Faith is what happens to you when the word ignites. When did not our hearts ignite within us? They heard familiar passages of scripture, but suddenly there was something more familiar than that. It was an inner cry, an inner echo, the amen within us, the yes, the agreement, the alignment with, with the original thought. And I realized that my being matters to my maker. My presence matters to my maker. My situation, my family situation, my financial situation, my situation with my kids or my neighbors, whatever it is, or my job, is overshadowed with this conversation. Just be, <laughs> not trying to persuade this one and trying to get this one to join my club, but, but just realize that we, we, we carry a presence that is really unstoppable. And it's not how we particularly feel on day, because some days you just don't feel the same as yesterday or what you're hoping to feel tomorrow. It doesn't matter because your your engagement is with another reality. <laughs> I, I, I will I don't have it with me now. The boss he what's up. Um, no, you, you know, it's, I'm speaking on it. Sorry, I've got my one. has a WhatsApp on the screen as well. But a, a wonderful gentleman, uh, Brother Ian from, from the UK, he actually leads our Mirror Words Bible study in this time zone, or these time zones, Europe. And, 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 and he, he just wrote such, such beautiful testimony. I think it was yesterday or the day before, just about how he would wake up in the mornings, you know, and I kind of test the mood of the day you know? because yeah. someone you don't feel, wake up with the same positive mood you, know, you have these moods yeah. and these yeah. situations and, <laughs> and then sometimes you feel happy because some happy things happen you know you're looking forward to that and that kind of, but how it all is eclipsed when you begin to understand that we are tapping into the mood of the joy of the Lord Come and on. allow the joy of the Lord to be the wake up call in our situation whether it's early morning rise or whether it's my situation right now some pain I feel somewhere or some situation that's, that's cropping up to realize that there's a greater joy there's a greater reality James 1 speaks of it the brother of Jesus none of his brothers believed in him remember until after the resurrection he also appeared to James and James says oh my goodness you know the, the father of lies with whom there's no very very there's this there is no shadow due to change. He has ignited our hearts to to realize that in him we live. He says that in be, begins the chapter with um, count it all joy when you meet various contradictions. And <laughs> what what other contradictions is to my true identity? Because I've discovered who I am. Whoever hears this word, he says, This is where the mirror idea came from years ago as a young preacher. Suddenly yeah. the scripture hit my spirit. Where James writes, he says, Anyone who hears this word, yeah. he says in the, the father of lights who gave birth to us through the word of truth there's no truer genesis that we have than coming from the father of lights we come from above a new thing from above that's what jesus said to nicodemus and you realize that you come from above that you that you weren't conceived your mother's womb and that's you. you 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 have you have an origin i knew you before i formed you in your mother's womb and now james comes and he says this identity cannot be challenged of course there will be temptations and situations but there's a place of joy that is hidden in the understanding 
understanding that this word has come, this word that reveals the face of my birth as in a mirror, when I'm suddenly introduced to the way that the Father has always known me. And he says in James, Paul writes so beautifully in that psalm in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12, he says, then we will know even as we have always been known. <laughs> If that's all we said this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are on your time zone, <laughs> to know as we've always been known. I want you to know that you've always been known. Come and on. you know what? It's in 1 Corinthians 13, the celebration of the agape of God. There is no other agenda in God but to love you. You've always been loved. He's always loved you. He's always <laughs> known you. And Jesus simply came to introduce us to the love of God. So we were really overwhelmed to realize <laughs> I am the W O W of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Jesus! Oh. Hey guys, I hope the podcast is blessing. Family Stories are a nonprofit we started ten years ago. The goal was to make media content catalytic for an encounter with the love of God, and I think I think we're doing it. Had no idea what that would all entail, and. In the last year has been blown away by what's happened around this podcast, Rethinking God with Tacos, the community that's gathered, the relationships and friendships that have been made, the conversations that have been had, the impact uh, has been actually quite profound in our lives. And I'm daily hearing from folks who have been encouraged because of the conversations being had, catalytic for an encounter with the love of God. Listen, we're listeners supported. And as this thing has grown, it's taken a little bit more of my time, time I love to give. Uh, and we've also had folks come along to help. And I'm so grateful for that. But it all works because you guys partnering with us and giving. And so I'm grateful for those who have partnered in that way. Incredibly grateful and in inviting you uh, who are watching this now, if you've been impacted, if this has blessed you, and, uh, you'd like to see it continue to improve and expand, I'd invite you to give. You can go to afamilystory.org, afamilystory.org. We're a nonprofit, and uh, so you can give there. Uh, you can also sign up for our mailing list, keep up with us, all things tacos, all things a family story, conferences, new books, Zoom calls. Uh, all of the amazing ways by which we're connecting the Facebook community. So thankful for you guys. Um, familystory.org. Sign up for our mailing list. Partner with us by giving. And uh, we'll continue to have those conversations that are hopefully like the one you're listening to now. Catalytic for an encounter with our Father's affection. All right, guys. Back to the podcast. Love you. See you soon. So you, you've come back to the, the, the full journey uh, uh, in the message. You, you said there's uh, there's uh, three people that were that uh, are righteous: <laughs> Adam, Jesus, and you. <laughs> what you're what, what you're describing uh, for me uh, the explosion in my heart that happened years ago and i continue to put language around and 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 the mirror comes along and i i get to read what it was that i discovered it was it was the awakening for me th 15 years ago of of uh, living not toward but living from and the explosion of union and i yeah. remember the day that yeah. uh, uh, that uh, my heavenly father came to me and he said you know jason you've been reading hope deferred makes the heart sick but desires and longing fulfilled is the tree of life as though it's a commentary uh, you know you read it and you say hope deferred <laughs> makes the heart sick and you go oh yeah that's true i have that experience that's what i know yeah. and he said hey, you can read it as a commentary on your life or as an invitation to yeah. live from longing yeah. fulfilled and actually oh. live from that place that that's the invitation. Yeah. You're saying faith is the fruit of our union. It isn't something I'm bootstrapping. It's not a, that faith has yeah. to do, that, that love yeah. has to do push-ups. It's, it's yeah. how do I wake up in the morning and say, Father, who are you? Yes, Jesus, reveal who you are. Show me how you yeah. see me. I repent, come into alignment with how you see me, and then take yeah. on the, the day. And that was, that, that's because this is what you're talking about to me is the gospel. It's the good news. And it's the invitation yeah. to those who are listening to 
to discover the faith of God. This is what you sp- are you're speaking yeah. of. And, and, yeah. and where, where are you navigating that paradigm? Because you said you wake up, the mood isn't yeah. always the same. The mood isn't always, yeah. sometimes it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, and, and and the weather changes, and 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 the news, and and especially you know people become so addicted to the latest news, and the you know, and the latest, yeah. the latest, and it becomes our conversation, oh, yeah. and that yeah. conversation is like a spiral downwards, you know, because yeah. they 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 always some kind of point of division, That's but double minded, right? This, or you see it that way, double mindedness. But yeah. I, I think the conversation, the the, the addiction. The addiction, because I, I like the word addiction. We become addicted yeah. to a certain conversation, to a certain taste, to say, you know, what, what one's ears, he says, morning by morning, Isaiah says, morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. And, 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 it's, it's, and, and, and out of the hearing, the tongue is ignited. And there's a conversation. I was speaking about a, a size audience that I'm addressing in any kind. It's just a, a conversation. It's just awakening to the reality of the, the beauty of this moment of, of eternity embraced in this moment of time. And this yeah. moment becomes so precious and I can dress it up, brush its teeth, you know, and, and get all straightened out for that. And there you go. And, 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 and you're in your going, there's just this, 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 amazing reality that remains established in your heart regardless of which direction today goes it is just this establishing and it is wonderful to find fellowship there in Philemon verse 6 Paul says that the fellowship of our faith ignites in this conversation it ignites when this conversation of everything that is in us in Christ so when we realize that we have a reference to our in Christness because it's mirrored in him. And the mirror is more true than what I can imagine in my own mind, you know, stuff that I've got to work through and, and, and engage with. I mean, there's, yeah. there's just this constant mirror. Even in what I love about, um, you know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, uh, Paul speaks about the love of Christ constraining me. That word constraining, soon echo in the Greek. Uh, and yeah. the other place where this word is so beautifully used, I read it just the other day where Luke uses it, uh, and he says that, um, it's in, I'm actually busy with Acts 18 and where Paul okay. engages with Priscilla and Aquila because they were of the same trade. So there was a natural connection. So, 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 so Paul's engagement with Priscilla and Aquila was not, was not, uh, in, 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 in a temple or some, it was, it was, it, it was just in the, in the marketplace and how the marketplace becomes a, the same platform. It's not a different platform. And, yeah. and then Luke uses exactly the same word. Paul was, Oh, I must read it. It's in Acts 18 somewhere. Let me just see if I can <laughs> find it here where, where, where he speaks about that same word. Soon echo that it was it was it was occupied when it was the work did not distract from the soon echo ness of the word because the word was not a page in a book somewhere in some scroll hidden in some foreign language but the word was just a conversation that took on flesh that took on wow. my face my features my smile my conversation and suddenly wow. it, it lights up the opportunity in the marketplace and here he has Priscilla and Aquila and they they are joined to him and, and they become part of of, of his conversation. And wonderful things happen through the two of them, but it's, it's <laughs> and that's the same place really that that we live in a in a very real world in a very yeah. real uh, real marketplace world. You know, we're yeah. we're so much. Uh, uh, I mean, people are are engaged in business. They're supposed to. I mean, the way would we be if we people were not engaged in business? Uh, thank God, everyone's not. Standing behind pulpits, you know. What I mean, I, mean I, I, I told I told our folk that we here this morning. You know, many years ago, and we had this, we had seven hundred young people over five years, and it started off in our house, and then someone gave us a hotel, and we had these people coming and going. And at that time, my my cousin joined us because we were so engaged with so many things. And he was a pilot; he flew for mission aviation in America. And so, so a long story, but we we managed to, supernaturally to get a plane because we had so many commitments a year in advance. You know, so so my cousin Steve Yurtz who flies around all these places to go. To. And I said to the students, you know, don't wait until you get wings. Don't even wait until you get wheels. Just consider the beauty that you have in your feet. And beautiful <laughs> feet comes from carrying a gospel that attracts the audience. You don't never need to look for a pulpit. You don't need to look for a message. They will look for you. <laughs> Come on, come on. And, and, and then suddenly the marketplace becomes such an opportunity. But to tell people, I mean, scriptures I know of my heart, but just, just to connect with people, to embrace them in the marketplace, in that place, in that place, to be absolutely at home there. I mean, for 30 years, Jesus was just carpenter, you know, I mean, when he's, in his youth years. And, then, and, 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 and there he was. He was just, he was just, just carpenter. But he comes with a mission that is fulfilled in the flesh. 
and and our in freshness is something so beautiful. Thank God for bodies, you know that that yawn in the even go to bed, sleep, dream, wake up, brush it, and there we go. And 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 for relational situations, because we we it's the most precious thing on planet Earth is relational. It's always relational. If it, if Come imagine on. if we take relational out of the conversation, where do we end up? But we've left God out there. He's out there. And, 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 oh, come on. The, the, the very platform for the most intimate, most beautiful, most amazing relationship you can imagine is to recognize Christ in one another and to salute Him there and to salute the beauty of God. Nothing makes your life more beautiful, more attractive, more irresistible, more adventurous. <laughs> And discovering this this platform to live from, as you said just now, the people asking, so so what is it about the mirror? I said it's one sentence: it's living from rather than towards. Come on, we've wasted so much time trying to get there. Come well, on, there is where we are to begin with. To Come begin on. with, and it's a new beginning for many, for many across this planet. We live in such an exciting moment where people across the planet are awakening to the I amness of God, the presence. The Borussia. <laughs> I realize, oh my goodness. It's right here. It's right it here. It's right here. your situation. <laughs> it is right here. I want to ask you. First, you sent Acts 17 about a month back. I didn't know I was right. but That's one of my favorites because that's got Jason in it. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the book, but, brother. <laughs> I'm in the book. Yeah. But, but that's... Let's talk because you you've spent uh, your life and in, in these last years um, interpreting uh, and 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 working through and 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 discovering our union on every page, and, and I think there is a a yes in in the conversation being had right now around the world where uh, you know your hermeneutic is right. If you see the word became flesh in the, in the person next to you, it, 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 it's Jesus is the hermeneutic, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's been, that's been the shift in my life. But what you just talked about, you know, I use the phrase relational theologian because that's, that's how I am wired. I, 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 I couldn't parse through scripture yeah. like you could, and, and I, I just don't have the mind for it. I'm so grateful you're doing it. But what the gospel is to me is discovered in, in my love for my wife and in my connection to yeah. my kids and in this conversation exactly. we're having and, and with my neighbors. And, and so to me, I know that it's true when I, when I see Christ in my neighbor, then I know I'm interpreting correctly. Am I, yeah. am I, am I tracking down roads that are safe? Yeah, the, the, the beauty of, of what you're saying is that uh, when Paul says, from now on, therefore, so there's a reference to my no longer seeing because there was a time when, when Paul saw and knew even Jesus from a, the Messiah, the Christ. He knew the Messiah uh, fr from, from Scripture, but from a distance. It, yeah. it was un, 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 not connected. It was disconnected. There was a disconnect. And, and, and I remember when we were in America just uh, uh, our, our trip in, in 2022, December 2022, and it was last year, January 23, where we were actually in Johnson City with a pastor and visited now. And, and someone in America showed me, because I do this, I send these um, what's messages on a, on a regular basis to people. I have several groups that I send it to, or not groups, it's just, just lists. And um, the, 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 the friend, I can't, can't remember, somewhere in America, they showed me that, that you don't have to type in the numbers or anything. You just go to WhatsApp, and then there's that little that, the, the grid, and, you, and it's, it's what, the QR code. And, you just, uh -huh. and it's just, this, and you've got all the information you want. And I thought, my goodness, if our technology can do that, <laughs> then, then that's what happens when we begin to see our neighbor. When we begin to see yeah. ourselves. <laughs> You know, yeah. when, before we clean up, you know, we just kind of stand there. If you've been working all day and then you've been, you know, you know, painting and it's paints all over you or, or grease of, of if you're a motor mechanic, whatever it is. But, but you begin to see your neighbor. You begin to see people. You begin to see your enemies through yes. eyes of faith. And it's not God holding thumbs. It's all going to work out in the end. It's, it's God declaring. So the gospel is a declaration of the incarnation before we can visibly see all the signs of it because we've seen enough in the reference 
to make us bold enough to declare the in Christness. The, yeah. You are as in Christ as you could ever be. Because John says he's given us understanding to know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. So when John, John writes this in, in his gospel, he says in chapter 14, verse 20, he says that this in the same conversation where he says, I, I'm not going to disappoint you. I, 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 I will not leave you like orphans. You know, It's to your advantage okay. that I go. It actually says that in, in chapter 16. But in verse 14, he says in verse 20, he says, in that day you will know that as I am in my Father, so you are in me, and I am in you. Then you've got the whole, I mean, in John 14, you've got the Father, Son, and Spirit, and mankind all uh, connected in the same understanding. And this is before we knew it. Before It's not, not our knowing. It's in that day you will know. Our knowing does not locate Jesus into the Father, as if there's been some separation somewhere along the line. Maybe in his incarnation, you know, in Mary's room, and in the, all the gossip of town. There was a, the, the, the in Christness, the in Father, for the, as I'm in my Father. I'm, I, I'm my Father, we are one. He says, so, so you are in me, and I am in you. And this becomes the essence, the voice of the gospel. When we speak to people, it is a place of innocence that we are from. It's not a place of potential you. The ugly duckling didn't see a potential swan, you know, in the reflection. Say, so, okay, well, I'm going to need quite a few facelifts, you know, before I can do this one. <laughs> Some people would, would try, would, which I've seen these pictures, you know, of a little cat sitting there, and there's a, a mirror image of a lion. So, so I mean, how are you going to ever get it right to upgrade the cat's mouth into a roar? Yes. Uh, it will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. And the truth yeah. to the swan is your swanship. Your swanship yes. was not lost in the lostness of what your thoughts dictated. Your swanship is redeemed. Your sonship <laughs> is redeemed. You are standing face to face with the original you, the mirror image. He brought us forth by the word of truth. And when any man hears this word, we've got two people that James uh, gives an example of, two in the same audience. The one is just too good to be true. So he goes away. Where does he go to? Back to his old way of seeing himself. I'm going back to the old ugly duckling mindset. It's so easy to slip into to that paradigm because it's, it's had its footprints all over my brain and suddenly the one paracupto is a leaning over and a gazing like through a microscope and I begin to recognize the detail of my being in hmm. Christ and I realize that I'm the idea of the invisible God and jo in Colossians 1 15 he says he's the image of the invisible God he gives face to the father he says you've seen me you've seen the father Come and on. in this place he says you'll know that you are in me and I am in you and it's, it's, it's this beauty of, it's not our knowing that does it. It's God's knowing that did it. And so we are invited into co-knowing. And that's the really <laughs> the, the word Lydia came up with when, 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 we, when we were speaking about metanoia. You know, how sad it is that we've lost that translation in the word repentance, which is a Latin word that doesn't belong in the Bible. It's a Latin no. word from the word metanoia, together with knowing. It's a knowing of my mind, with, where my mind ignites. That's why Paul, when he begins his letters, he prays in Ephesians that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light. I mean, Paul's prayers is not wasted, uh, would not be wasted on, on, on uh, praying for just more provision and you begin, it's going to be a cold winter. Can you just send me a cloak? Last winter was ice cold. You know, and, and, and he said, I pray that, that when I open my mouth, that, that utterance may be given me so I know how to speak the mystery of Christ. And the mystery is only a mystery because our minds have been so uh, preoccupied with the contradictions. And many people that ignite for a moment or for a season, then the contradictions come and become a voice again. And, and and, and that voice nullifies. It's the one who sees the face of his birth, but he goes away. And then James says, and immediately forgets what manner of man he is. So I forget who I am. My amnesty is, is, is not in, in some kind of trade situation where the values go up and down, you know, like gold can somewhere, you know, exceed the rand. You don't want to talk currency in, in South Africa. The, the, uh, you know, we, we, but we, we are talking a currency that is of heaven and you are the carrier of it. Every individual is the carrier of it. There's not a person on this planet that does not carry equal value, equal, equal recognition, equal inclusion in all that God is. And desires to exhibit through through the, the simplicity of the gospel. You know, we make it very, but it's so simple. It's just it's just really in your gaze, in your love, in your relational being present on planet Earth, and being present in your marriage, and being present in your parenthood, and being present in your society, in the marketplace, wherever you find yourself, and realizing right. that presence. The next person is equally embraced, equally loved, even though their behavior might be completely awkward and, and uncomfortable. There's a comfortableness. There's an at-homeness, a conversation where everyone feels equally loved and appreciated. And, 
and known. Hey guys, I want to tell you about my friend JD Cobb, jdproductions.com. If you've seen an uptick on the quality, and I think you're going to see more in the coming days, that's because of JD and his uh, amazing staff and crew and all the folks that he works with. jdproductions.com. Look at. He's focused not just on podcasts but in television shows. He also helps us with our GAN show, along with the show I do with Baxter Kruger. He stepped in halfway through, and you'll see uh, the quality immensely increase. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Whether you're looking to inform, entertain, or inspire, uh, JD Productions customizes a plan to speak to your audience. I'd encourage you to let them bring your podcast vision to life. With expert storytelling and production skills, look at I love JD. Thankful for the impact he's made in my life as a friend, and I'm grateful for what he's uh, done for our podcast. And I couldn't recommend him enough. If you're uh, a podcaster or have something else you're producing, want to put together commercials, there's all kinds of other work that they do. So, JDProductions.com, check them out. Bro, oh, this is the gospel, I uh I feel the the love of God all over the words you're saying. I I'm um, I'm moved. Um, we have a phrase, and it, it's it's both. And we are in eternity right now. Everything is is in yeah. this moment, and also the long game of love. That we're in a long game of love, and which and yes. this is where yeah. it comes full circle. This measureless nature of this times two love. This measureless revelation that we're continually awakening to who he is our union yeah. in him who we are i am yeah. the i you know, what you're saying yeah. it, it what it does is it takes all the pressure off of me to look at you and, and and see you connected to your behaviors or your delusions or your confusions instead yeah. i'm not i'm not thinking in the context of well we have a ticking clock and it's going to end yeah. up cu cutting us off from the uh, yeah. everlasting awakening. And, yeah. and so yeah. uh, to speak to that maybe before we shift. I know you only, we have an hour here, but there's this, uh, you know, yeah. it's when God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, he was not counting sins, which is a very yeah. human thing. And, and, and this is the double mindedness that pulls, I think that pulls people away. I guess I'm saying, in this measureless revelation, I, I have the liberty to walk into a room, and even though somebody else might want me to count sins, I don't feel the pressure to do that because I'm just there to see Christ in them. I'm not limited yeah. by, oh, we only have an hour together, or, oh, they only may have two years left on the planet, or instead, I, I'm yeah. convinced yeah. That revealing Christ in them is actually the seed yeah. that I can sow that will exactly. manifest. Is that is that is yeah. that a yeah absolutely the, the, the beauty about this this gospel is that um, it 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 carries over it 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 it's it it, it strikes like a match is, is struck and it and it ignites a flame and 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 the, that that carry is beyond our control you know yeah. what I mean we we don't have to constantly just uh, obviously there's a fellowship and there's a wonderful place of nurturing and and being nurtured and feeling encouraged and enriched and conversation that that from there's there's a oneness in our voice I was just reading in 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 in, in, in um, Corinthians how Paul uh, you know is, is rather shocked that, that that people can so easily say well I'm of Cleo or I prefer um, Kephas or Peter's emphasis and I'm more messianic if you wish you know and then I'm of Paul and 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 he says we we, we want to cut Jesus up into rules relics but when we come back to just the basics and just understanding that in in this love encounter thank god for the journey of life it's a yes. wonderful journey but it's not towards it's from it's it's yes. an awakening from that yes. and, and in yes. my conversations from that yeah yeah I, I had a conversation with someone this morning you know on the telephone and and and, and we were speaking about the, the situation you know in america right now we, we thank god for what we have in america and and the, and and what we had in south africa and in south africa and all over where, where there, there are critical situations in terms of you know immigrants and people coming without papers and, and documents but this 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 mind life changing reality no longer knowing 
anyone according to the flesh. Of realizing that the, 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 the kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdom of our God and of His Christ. And to the increase of His government, there shall be no end. And here we realize, my goodness, you know, we, we, we sometimes worried about how many of this race or that. But we see, we no longer see people classified in races, in little boxes of you believe this and vote for that. But here we are in the miracle of life. And in this miracle, we have opportunity to communicate, like just striking a match. Just a little thought, a word, a, a sentence that ignites someone's life. And out of your innermost being, something begins to glow. And it, its glow carries, it carries into an endless timelessness. And But yeah. thank God for the time frame. I thank God for today. I thank God for this moment. And this yeah. moment carries a value that we cannot, we, we, you know, we could, we could record it and thank God for that. Thank God for technology. I, I would <laughs> never underestimate it. I think it's, it's, it's designed as those Roman roads. I've got a picture in, in the, in the yes. chapter 17 of those yep. Roman roads. And they're amazingness of how they crisscrossed, you know, societies and they, they had the, the desire and the drive and the ability to do all this. And here God comes and we're living in an age where you can click a button and you connect it globally. You can whisper words that carry beyond your 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 time. Your, I mean, we can be in complete different time zones. It's now, what is it now? It's 5 to 6 in South Africa PM. But here we are. <laughs> Oh, oh, Lydia, and, and you must try to, to, to tell Lydia, Lydia sitting right next to me. I wanted Hi, to Lydia. say something about the, 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 the chocolate. From the, oh, I'm the, so glad you're here. <laughs> Lydia I'm sitting next to my darling. I'm so enjoy. <laughs> You can yes. hear me. Oh, super. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I've just, while listening and your conversation, I've just been pressed upon something we so underestimate in this amazing unveiling, the, the essence of walking and living in um, a consciousness of innocence. <laughs> it's it's such a pivotal part yeah. to a love, to a love affair, yeah. to to life, to Christ, to engaging with one another, to engaging with the Holy Spirit, is this consciousness I come from innocence. Yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. oops. oops. Oh there we go. Can <laughs> you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, Paul says something so weird. He says, I know nothing against my own conscience, yeah. but I'm not there. Justified by that. I'm not there by justified. <laughs> he found an innocence about himself that's bigger than his own memory, his own life. It is just, how does God m mm. manifest his presence inside of me if I'm not innocent, if I'm not pure Worthy. and holy and beautiful. Yeah. And it's very important for us to engage there because when we engage in that, it's so much easier to transmit just that acceptance and that love and that because we're speaking to the innocent. That's why God says, I don't see your sin because for God, it's not something to be seen. He said, it's, it's like something we've made. We've been so sin conscious and yeah. things conscious. And God says, yeah. I don't, I don't see them. They've, they're they not part of the equation. It's like flying and you're going over these mountains and we're looking at them and they're full of snow or they're full of bumps and umps and whatever. But when you fly, it's irrelevant. It's a dimension, yeah. spirit dimension, yeah. which is our, our very – mode. Yes, my baby. It's our point of departure. It's our origin and it's our point of departure. And we, we can just rest in that. I was sorry. We were, we've had a horrendous storm. <laughs> really, it, it's been very, very rough. And I look outside and it's like flat, but we've got shrubs and we've got flowers, but everything's flat. Boom. The wind just flattens it. And then I think, how do you survive? 
because they're gone with the wind. They're lying over there. They're not, they don't have to defend themselves against the wind. The wind blows them. And they say, okay, I'm rooted. <laughs> I'm grounded. <laughs> I know more than you. You're trying to tell me here forever, but you're not. I know you're going to pass. And that's it. Contradictions come in every size or shape or whatever. And they want to push us. But we're not there to resist a contradiction. We're there to remind ourselves of our co-seatedness. We're there to remind ourselves of our hugs and kisses. And the love of God, the intimacy, that's something that can't be described in words. It's something that just needs to be encountered. That's right. Come Thank, on. You. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Past my hellos and my love, so good to see her. That is beautiful. That is so powerful. That is so beautiful. Thank you, Lydia. I'm so grateful. Yeah. That is the word. We are innocent. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I am so thankful for you guys. I don't want to listen. Um, do you? We're going to shift because we've ha I've had you for an hour. It's Rethinking God with Tacos. I, I don't know if you eat tacos. Does Lydia eat tacos? <laughs> Lydia, do you eat tacos? Taco. When we're in America, do. we do. I we don't really them. have tacos in South Africa. He's got the ears now. I'm just, we, we, I'm, I'm playing a little bit. We had the, t the title of this is Rethinking God with Tacos. And so we have a lot of fun about rethinking or, or, or changing metanoia. And then yeah. we talk tacos because it is relational. That was partly why I put it in yeah. there was how do yeah. we fellowship together and gather. And so I always yeah. ask guests about tacos yeah. at the end of the it's conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I have to at least, it's yeah. So From our innermost. From our innermost. Translate there, Francois. I'm having a hard time hearing her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just that, that wonderful. That's that. That's just that wonderful reference that is such a constant. You know, the constant yeah. of the reference of the Father is not um, some some distant uh, memory. But when Paul speaks to these uh, at seventeen, it's just such a beautiful place. One of my most favorite chapters, where he says that that the, that he, that this, this God, whom who is celebrated even in your own prophetic word, where who says that in Him we live and move and have our being, and then he quotes Aratus. He says we are indeed His offspring. He says being then the offspring. Just just rethink this. Just rethink that we are is the offspring of God. If that if that is our initial connection with the gospel, that it announces that we are of the Father. We did not come through our mothers. We thank God for our mothers. But there's a different genesis to our beingness on this planet. We are the idea of God, <laughs> that we are the invention of God. We do not invent God. God invented us. And here we are, compatible, fully compatible to respond to. And so Paul connects these Greek, uh, these philosophers, you know, on the Areopagus, where he's speaking to them, he says, this, this God, this God, who is not far from each one of us, he's not closer to the Jew than what he is to the Gentile, to the Christian than what he is to the pagan. He's equally present in every person's situation, wherever they are. He says, he has unveiled himself. And then he says, he, he has announced a time, he has, he's announced a, a time and a day, a, a day and a person. And on that day, in that person, he would judge the world innocent. The righteous judgment of God is is brought forth in innocence. He says, and 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 and, and uh, 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 that that he was handed. I'm just thinking of Romans chapter four twenty five. He was handed over because of our sins, but he was raised because of our innocence. And so Paul concludes his conversation right there in in Acts seventeen. He says that that, that that his resurrection is the evidence that he gave proof to this. God gave evidence to to this idea that he is the origin of mankind by by raising Jesus from the dead. So the Amen. document of guilt on the cross and the resurrection announcing the innocence of the human race, the redeemed Amen. innocence of God, and from that place of innocence, the gospel finds its own feet into people's <laughs> lives and hearts. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's our identity. It's beautiful. That is there's so much <laughs> liberty and transformation actually available to us even in that yeah. there. That's just yeah. the revelation of who we truly are coming into an alignment with it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Let's do this. Um, uh, I want to have you um, uh, pray for us just briefly, if you don't mind. 
Yeah. Um, and then and then stick around. When I hit stop, I needed to upload, so I don't want to lose you. Sure. So could, sure. could you, uh, first of all, well, where do we find the, the mirror? I've got, I, I mean, you can find it on Amazon. Is this the new, the three books that I have? Yeah, we, we actually the, do have them in 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 America. We, we we print one that I don't have now. It's a it's a thousand five hundred pages. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, those three are, are 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 in one volume that we print in South Africa and we ship them to to America. The blue one we yeah. don't do anymore. So the 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 yeah. the, the, the black ones, are the, the the one that we have, um, we've got a new red one without the commentary, which is a, a smaller book. It's about just over, I think, about five hundred pages, which is available on Amazon. Our our okay. our, our website is mirrorworld.net. Mirrorword.net, and then there's a very dear lady, the 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 the, the pastors that we are yesterday. The, 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 she's one of the pastors in their church, um, Jean uh, Tringale, uh, who, who lives in in um, uh, Syracuse, and and she she has stock of the mirror. We've just sent a few boxes up, and and I could just send you the details. I'll email it to you. Okay. Okay. It's it's on the oh, website. Wonderful. It's it's on mirrorword.net, so you can okay. get the one volume uh, right there, delivered in 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 America, and. Uh, I, I, I highly, I just can't say enough about this, this, this translation. This, this is um, I, the, the reason I p picked this one up is that it's just, it's just endlessly. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I've, I've marked it up over and yeah. over, so you know it's yeah. your favorite. I, I want to pick up the new one and read it, but I'm like, yeah. but this is the one with all my notes in it, and all my yeah, circles and my stars and my and the, and the, and the margins, all my yeah. thoughts about union. So I'm so great. And it's uh, also pray, on an app, pray. and the app keeps its the, the, the notes that you do on an app. It, it's restored, and, and you get the app um, renewed. It, it gets re it, it, it gets updated uh, several times a year. The Kindle as well, so then you can carry it in your pocket, and you can add all those verses squashed into one. <laughs> I have it in my pocket too. So and there you go. <laughs> pray, pray, pray a, a blessing over us, and then stick around when I hit stop here, we so we can that. upload it. We yes, will sir. do that, Father. We thank you that we can just be in this moment. And realize that the, that eternity who dwells within us is at one with you. And that we can just announce your your blessings, your goodness, that, that every blessing heaven has was lavished upon planet earth, was lavished upon this planet, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell in it. I thank you that every single individual on this planet is equally loved and embraced and endorsed in the man Jesus Christ, in the incarnate one who is the, 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 the single grain of wheat, who did not abide alone, but fell into the earth and died. And in his resurrection, he bore much fruit. I thank you for the fruitfulness of your glory unveiled in ordinary people, Father, that we can just go ballistic on this planet with the joy of the Lord, introducing people to who they already are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> and we thank Amen. you for this precious friend. Thank it's you, so Lord. beautiful. My my uh, my parents pass on their love to both thank of you. Thank you so much. So Just thankful embrace you're them, hug them. Oh my goodness, <laughs> love this you, is man. beautiful. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our guests, you can go to afamilystory.org. You can also go to afamilystory.org. Uh, if you'd like to give, this is a listener supported podcast and we are incredibly grateful for your generosity. Hey, we have a Facebook group and it's pretty cool. Uh, Rethinking God with tacos. You can join us over there. Lots of incredible conversation and community taking place on that page. And you can also follow us on all the socials, Instagram, YouTube, and others. Hey, I'd love it also if you... Uh, went on iTunes and left a review or shared or tweeted or liked the podcast. Uh, let your friends know that this is a good place to hear about the love of God. I pray grace and wonder over your day.